Warning, the following episode contains elements of horror that may be unsuitable for listeners under the age of 13. Listener discretion is advised. Hello. We've been expecting you. I'm Brianna, and welcome to Beyond the Bazaar's 13 Nights of Frights. From October 19th through October 31st, Halloween night, we will be sharing with you some of our favorite hand-picked urban legends, lore, stories, and more that we love to talk about during this special time of year. So take a seat. Make yourself comfortable for these 13 nights of terror. Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode of Beyond the Bazaar. I'm Brianna, and here we are on another night of our 13 Nights of Frights, our Halloween special. For the month of October. So yesterday I shared with you guys the Lavender Town Syndrome from the um, Pokemon Red and Green 1996 game that is rumored or said to be responsible for many suicides of young children and teens back in 1996 in Japan. And I also share it with you guys a own um, personal story of mine that had nothing to do with Lavender Town but it just popped into my mind I just wanted to share it with you guys so I hope you guys enjoyed hearing that and I hope to be able to share more personal stories of mine in the future or even personal stories of just individual people so if you guys like ever or have ever experienced anything or would ever like to share anything with us that we could share on our show, we'd be more than happy to do that. We would actually be honored to do that. You can send that to us on our Instagram, Beyond the Bazaar, our website, www.beyondthebazaar.com, and we're also on Facebook as well at Beyond the Bazaar. So yeah, if you ever you know want to share that with us and would feel comfortable for us to share it, on the podcast we would love to do that with you guys or we can even share it as a post it's entirely up to you with this week's episode we're actually going to be talking about a ritual that I stumbled across while just researching I don't actually think I was researching I think I just was just doing just some general just reading for fun because I like to read weird stuff <laughs> and I actually stumbled across the ritual here that's known as the scorpion ritual now the title it the title in itself is enough to entice me to actually want to learn more about it and when I read read about it and found out what the steps are to actually do it once again I wouldn't do this myself and nor am I suggesting for anyone else to actually do it I'm just here to tell you about it and how to do it and if you decide to do it play at your own risk as always but the purpose of the scorpion ritual is to bring back the dead that sounds morbid I know so if you plan on doing the scorpion ritual there are a few things to make note of the first thing to make note is that the ritual must be done within a week of the death and a live scorpion must be used. Now, unlike other rituals, you're not in danger if the ritual fails. If the ritual were to fail, you just have to do it over again until it's successful if you want to if you want to keep continuing it to make it a successful attempt and to obtain the goal of bringing the dead back to life. So, with that being said, let's get into the steps of how to play the scorpion ritual so as always we start with these supplies that you need so of course a body the caveat is the body cannot be embalmed it has to be pretty much a body that just dropped 
that sounds so that sounds so messed up. I'm sorry, but the next supply that you would need is one large scorpion. It has to be large, not so much for venomous purposes, but just for the stinger. You would need one bottle of acid under the pH of three. Note, if the acid is too strong, it will eat through the body and it can also cause bodily harm to you. We don't want that. The next supply is one alcoholic beverage. So this alcoholic beverage will be used as a drink and to counteract the acid. If you're under the age of 21 or under the legal drinking age in your country, or you just choose not to drink, you do not have to drink it, but still bring it anyway. You would need one gallon jug of a flammable liquid, but not explosive. We don't want you blowing yourself up. Just make sure the liquid is flammable. The next thing that you would need is a primitive lighting method. So a fire drill, sticks, flint and steel, etc. Nothing modern such as matches or a lighter or any advanced method of lighting. The next supply that you would need is one spear that you made yourself. It cannot be made of iron or metal. It can be made of stone, flint, or sharpened wood. This spear is for protection as well as for the ritual. Now back to the fire, you can use tinder or a torch or oil lantern, but nothing modern. Prior to conducting the ritual, keep the following in mind. Any electronics is strictly forbidden during the ritual. If there is anything electric within one mile of, of the ritual site, the ritual will not work. So this means houses, cars, cell phones, etc. will not work. Well, the supplies themselves will work, those things will work, but the ritual will not work, so do not have those things nearby. As for a car, you can have it parked outside of the one mile for an instant escape if you should need it. You just have to be fast enough to run one mile. As for the ritual, there may be an audience for the ritual, but only one player standing within the ring of fire and actually doing the ritual. All audience members must also abide by the no electronics rule. And the most important fact to keep in mind is that although the audience isn't playing, they may still be at risk if the ritual actually works. Starting the ritual. Step one, collect the body. The body must, and I repeat must, have died less than a week earlier and cannot be preserved in any way. Now this does exclude any type of materials that you use to reduce the smell. Those are allowed, but it, once again, it cannot be embalmed. The cause of death does not matter, as long as most of the body is intact. The age or gender is also unimportant in the ritual. Step two. The next thing you will need to do is find a spot to complete the ritual. Remember, you may not have any electronic devices. You may transport the body to the playing area by a car but the car, once again, must at least be taken at least a mile outside of the playing area. Step three, take all your supplies and set them down. If you brought a lantern, do not light it and take the flammable liquid and create a circle around yourself and the body. Do not light the circle yet. Be sure that you have the scorpion secure in a jar if you can and the acid in a separate jar. Make sure the spear is nearby. On the next step, take one sip of the alcoholic beverage. Do not drink too much. Toast the drink to the sky. Do not say anything, but smile. It will make him happier. Now this step is optional. If you do not want to drink, or if you cannot drink, skip this step. Lay the body out, palms up and hands rested on the heart in a cup. So the heart's not in a cup, you just kind of make sure the hands are cupped, if that makes sense. Release the scorpion, 
into the cupped hands of the body. Then pour the rest of the alcoholic beverage into the hands of the body. It does not matter if it spills out, just that most of the drink is pulled in the hands. Upon doing this, if the scorpion has crawled out, reposition it. Then, using your spear, lightly, lightly, poke an area in the hands of the body. Now, if you do this correctly, the scorpion will instinctively sting the hand. You must keep doing this until the scorpion stings once. If you must, force the sting using your hands, but just be careful. After you've done this and the scorpion has stung the body, light the fire. Now this may be difficult and made more difficult by the fact that the scorpion cannot move from the cupped hands of the body. If you prefer, you can do this before you release the scorpion, but it's suggested that you do it the other way around. Now as soon as the fire is lit, stand back and do not allow the fire to touch the body. Let it surround you completely, but be safe, be sure not to inhale too much smoke or any smoke at all for that matter. As soon as you're completely surrounded by the fire, immediately, and I mean immediately, pour the acid directly onto the scorpion. Now, this will kill the scorpion and likely counteract the alcohol. But wait, keep standing. Do not, I repeat, do not sit. Do not make any attempts to leave the circle. If you have any friends, this will be the last chance for you to have them leave until the revival has begun. After a few moments, the area that you dropped the acid will pull black. Now at this moment, you must take the spear that you made and stab it into the area the liquid has originated. Now if you're having trouble finding that place where it originated, just stab multiple places to be on the safe side. Now as soon as you do this, the body, the corpse will start to shake. Pull the spear back. As you pull the spear back, the corpse will begin to rise. As it does, the fire surrounding you will get lower. The moment that the corpse is on his feet, the fire will die completely, leaving you in the dark. Run for it. Time to make the escape. As soon as the corpse has risen, it will gain full control over its body. After all, the dead do not like to be woken up and they will likely attack. Now, that's not to say you cannot make an attempt to fight it. You may. But the only way to kill the beast is to hit directly as to where the poison was placed, the place where the scorpion stung. The spot will continue to bleed black slowly. If you're lucky enough to get a direct hit and you penetrate the area, you may be able to kill the corpse. However, with such a primitive and flimsy weapon, you may have extreme difficulty completing this task. With that being said, there are two other ways to escape the dead. The first is obvious to simply leave the male radius and escape. The body will be able to leave the radius due to the mile not being a barrier for the body either. The course will most likely chase you for the rest of your life until it is ended or you are ended. The second option you have is to hide. The corpse fears the light. It's the last thing that they saw. Fire will most likely not scare them, but you may have luck in sunlight. If you're able to hide for the rest of the night, 
they may be able to scare the beast off. With that being said, a good idea would be to do the ritual less than an hour before sunrise. But do keep in mind that if the sun rises at any point during the ritual, it will not work. So if the sun rises during any point where it's leading up to the reanimation of the body, it will not work. So you have to be sure that you have enough time to complete the ritual if you still want to do it. But also be sure that you're safe by sunlight, pretty much. <laughs> Attacking the monster is not suggested at any time unless you can possibly kill the body within a minute of reanimation. The longer that the body is alive, the angrier, the angrier they get. The corpse will be physically weak, but super fast, and can regenerate small wounds. Now, if you have any friends who watch the ritual, be sure to account for them the very next day. Even though they did not help you bring the body back, the corpse may still sh have an anger for them. Anyone who is not shown may have likely been killed, as the corpses are known to have cannibalistic properties and oftentimes violently rip apart their victims. There are some stories, albeit rare, that people that are killed by the corpses are given the same curse and come back to life themselves and they will assist the corpse in hunting for you. If one of your friends is wounded but comes back from the ritual, they may in fact be brainwashed or be enslaved to the corpse that you brought back and they will attack you in secret. And before we forget one last thing, if you happen to feel an odd fear of arachnids that you didn't have before, but you now have after ritual, maybe you're better off dead. Okay, so I have to say that the scorpion ritual probably takes the cake for the most creepiest ritual that we've shown that we've shared thus far. Definitely takes the cake there. My thoughts on it, I think it's cool, but also, as I said, creepy. One of the coolest things I thought about it was a lot of things are primitive, you, primitive, like the lighting, lighters, matches, the traditional things that we use or that we hear mentioned often in other rituals that are okay to use. It's, it won't work for this type of ritual. The spear, it can't be metal. It has to be something that's primitive from the beginning of time type of thing which makes sense since you're partaking in the ritual to bring back the dead here but the first thing that popped into my mind when I was reading this is that who in the right mind after reading this will want to bring something back just to either be forced to have to kill it or just be hunted by it for the rest of their life so that's something that I wouldn't even want to be involved in and then not to mention you have to handle over a scorpion and make sure the scorpion stings the course and make sure it doesn't sting you it's just so many things with this can go wrong up until it being successful and then even then like it's not really anything that you're getting out of it like with other rituals you're able to see the other side or most rituals have some type of risk but it just seems like with this one there's really no reward to play it other than just doing it out just out of sheer fascination i don't know but at everything like you know you get to see the other side with other rituals like the elevator ritual or like the doors of your mind that we shared you get to have a deeper understanding of yourself but with this it's just like there's no pros to playing it. it's like you're going to bring back a corpse either you're going to kill it you know or you're going to be hunted by it and the only opportunity you have is within that one minute that it's reanimated that you can just hope you that you stab in the correct area with your spear and hopes that it's that it kills it but then like you went through all that just for that or after it's reanimated you have to just run you know and just hope that you're able to get away but even then it's it's still going to chase you so this tale was really interesting it did derive from a creepypasta like most of the um, internet rituals that we find do but like i said i thought it was one of the 
coolest ones because it calls for a lot of detailed, a lot of intricate steps that you have to follow. And if it's even off by just a little bit, then it won't work, which from the sounds of the ritual, it may be. It may be for the best there that it doesn't because having to not have any electronics, you know, all kinds of all kinds of just different steps you have to follow. But the good thing about it, I think, is that if you were to have electronics or something was to mess up during the ritual, then if it's unsuccessful, you'll be fine. You won't have to worry about anything negative happening at the aspect if it were to fail. But if it's successful, you have everything to worry about, of course. And then another thing with the with the dead body, like if it's not a bomb, like how do you get the body? Do you kill someone? I'm not I'm not suggesting anyone kill anybody. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Do not no, don't kill anyone. But like just like how would you even go about getting the body? It's just like all these thoughts were running through my head just reading this ritual. So that's why I thought it's it was really cool and different from the other ones that you usually hear. It's also more darker, that's for sure. But that's what us here beyond the bazaar we like we like to kind of dabble into the weird and the darkness and that's why we're that's why we're here doing this you know each and every week and we're we're really happy to be doing this 13 nights of frights for the month of october leading up to to halloween and tomorrow's episode that we're looking forward to sharing with you guys well actually we will be talking about an old urban legend from Beijing regarding the importance of not taking the last bus of the night come back tomorrow for another episode of beyond the bizarre our 13 nights of frights until then as always stay bizarre